I'm Chris, and in this physics lesson, we're going to take a look at a question about a free-falling body, which basically just means an object that is falling through the air towards the ground. So most of the time in physics, when you're dealing with these kinds of questions, or at least when you're first being presented with these types of questions, you'll be asked to ignore air resistance, or you'll be told that air resistance is negligible. So that's going to be the case here. So for right now, in this problem, we're going to look at this without air resistance present. Now, a little bit later on in physics, and in a few of our later videos, we'll take a look at what to do with air resistance and how to take that into account. But for right now, we're going to ignore that factor, and we're just going to assume that the ball is falling through the air, but with no air resistance opposing its motion. So let's take a look at this question. If a 6 kilogram ball is dropped from a height of 19.6 meters, how long will it take to reach the ground? So with any physics problem, the first step that we want to take is to write down what values we know. So from this problem, we know that the mass is 6 kilograms. We know that the height that it's falling, its change in height, or delta y, will be 19.6 meters. Now, it looks like we don't know much else, but there are actually a few things that we do know because of the way that the question describes the situation with the ball and because of some standard constants that we hopefully know um, in dealing with these kinds of questions. So first of all, acceleration. Acceleration is not mentioned here, but what force is it that's pulling this ball towards the ground? Hopefully, we take a look at this situation, we say to ourselves, well, it's gravity that's pulling this ball towards the ground, and it is. So the acceleration due to gravity is going to be our value of 9.8 meters per second squared. And that's a constant value that if you don't already know, you should make it a point to know because it will come up in any free-falling motion problem um, with physics, the acceleration due to gravity, whenever you have a vertical component of acceleration, it's always 9.8 meters per second squared, as long as you're here on Earth. And then there's one other value that we know from this problem that isn't explained explicitly in the problem, but it is something that we can pull from the information given. It says that it's dropped from a height of 19.6, so we're holding the ball and then we're letting go of it and it begins to fall, which means right when we let go of it, we do know the initial velocity of that ball. Just before the ball begins to fall, it starts out with an initial velocity of zero meters per second. And then they're asking how long will it take to reach the ground, so they're asking about time. And that's what we want to solve for on this. Now, if we know some of our velocity, position, time, acceleration equations. I like to refer to those as the big three. If we know those big three equations, then we should be in good shape to answer something like this. And it's just a matter at this point of making sure we're able to pick out the right equation. One thing I will point out, and you will see this depending on the level of difficulty of the physics problems that you're covering, or even the level of difficulty of your class. Here we're given the mass of six kilograms. And let's see if we can take a look at what the equation is that would allow us to solve for time, given all of these values as knowns. So if we take a look over our velocity-related questions, hopefully we're honing in on this one, which is that delta y is equal to v initial, your initial velocity times time, plus 1 half acceleration times time squared. Now the reason that we want to use this equation is because the nice thing about having an initial velocity of zero is that it cancels out that term from our equation. So this equation actually simplifies a little bit, and as we plug in our values, delta y is 19.6, 1 half times 9.8 times t squared. We're down to one variable, and we will be able to solve for t here. The reason I pointed out that the mass is 6 kilograms is because a lot of times in challenging physics questions, you will be given an extra value that you don't actually need in order to solve the question. And it sometimes can be misleading. It can cause us to maybe use the wrong equation. So that's why it's important not just to memorize the equations, but to really understand how to use those equations 
so that we know which variables are helpful to solving for what we need to find and which variables don't really help us get to where we're going. In this case, to go ahead and simplify, 1 half times 9.8 gives us 4.9, so we get 4.9 t squared. When we divide both sides by 4.9, 4.9 goes into 19.64 times. So 4 is equal to t squared, and therefore our time will be equal to 2 seconds. So for a ball that is 19.6 meters off the ground, if we let go of it and let it fall to the ground, then the amount of time that it will take that ball to reach the ground is 2 seconds. If you'd like to do some more practice, take a look at some of our other physics videos, or you can visit our website at sandersontestprep.com. Thanks for watching.